Welcome to episode two of the Excess Reality Podcast. I'm your host, Allison Day, and I'm here with my co-host, Sun Nguyen. Hello. And we have some exciting, surprising news. We did not think that we were going to be getting our quest for a while. Yes. We thought it was going to take some time. It was going to be at least a month. But we just got notified that it has shipped. And by the time you hear this episode of the podcast... We should have it in our hands. Hopefully. I'm or, so excited. Or have it on our head, Alison. On just our faces. It's going to be just, yeah. On our I'm faces. I'm just going to walk around the house with, with, the, <laughs> with the headset on. I'm never going to get to play with it, am I? No, no. Wow. I'm going to be fully immersed. I'm fully not gonna, immersed. I'm going to skip this reality. I'm going to be in a new reality, Alison. You're going to get so motion Access sick. Access reality. And run into so many things. Well, that too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> But yeah, so we know for sure that we want to get Beat Saber because yes. we tried out that demo last time we had the quest and enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to that. But I want you guys to let us know what else should we get? What other games or experiences or whatever? What should we try on the quest? Yes. Because, hey, we've got a podcast about this now. So we have a really good excuse to try things. <laughs> Exactly. It's a perfect exactly. excuse for everything. I do kind of wish we had it last week, though, or a couple weeks ago. Yes. For that Mixed Reality Dev Days thing. The Microsoft Mixed Reality Dev mm -hmm. Days. So this was a conference held right after Microsoft Build. And it was all about Mixed Reality, but it was held in alt space. Yes. Which is uh, a, mixed a, a VR platform i guess yes it's it's, it's like a alt space vr it's it's, it's mm -hmm. essentially a, a vr game that is it's a social vr game and it's less. it was meant to be able to almost mimic the feeling of a real conference yes and since we didn't have the headset it wasn't as easy to try it out uh you could download it on windows and get into alt space that way but we were we were running into some problems and it definitely was not not as easy as we had hoped. No, it was it was a pain in the butt. <laughs> well, we didn't have a headset. So, right. So and there, there's another way that you can do it by just downloading it through Steam. Mm -hmm. So it's just like any other game. It's, it's essentially like a like you think of World of Warcraft. It's a multiple MMORPG without the RPG part. Um, and MMO. Can, <laughs> MMO. It was yes, an MMO. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Multi um users experience and you can download it on steam for windows i think windows only there's mm -hmm. no there's you not, couldn't do it on mac there's no mac version yeah. of it so that's why you can right join it and i'm right. i'm using a lot more windows now because i'm trying to do game devs and you know xr devs and stuff like that so i downloaded it i tried it i installed it he was um, cursing all morning <laughs> It was a pain to get in there. It was so so much. There, there's so much of a barrier to to entry of it. He was like, "Why are there tutorials tutorial. in my face? Why can't I get into the rooms?" But the funny part is the tutorial is geared for you having a VR headset device, right? So I'm sitting there, and the game is telling me to to teleport here and teleport there. I'm like, "I'm not teleport. I'm just gonna use my <laughs> my WASD to uh -huh. move around." Mm -hmm. So I'm moving around, and it's telling me to do all these things, and I'm just. I'm just thinking to myself, I'm, I don't have a headset. Can you just let me in? I just want Please. to. I just want to watch this this Dev Days, you know, conference. It, it went on for two days, and I just want to attend these these, you know, the the conference, the talks and stuff like that. And it was just so much barrier of entry to get in there. And once I got in there, it's they trying to. I think they're doing a good job with mimicking what it feels like to go to an, a physical conference mm -hmm. where you sit in a um like an auditorium or a small room and you have somebody up there presenting it right uh the material to you and and so they mimic that it's, it's kind of cool but at the same time um i i i guess my i just want to see the the talk right i want to see the 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 slide i mean I wanna... I, my expectation is when I'm watching the talks, yeah. I don't care about the experience of being at a conference. Yeah. I don't need to be surrounded by people or avatars. I don't need to feel like I need to get closer to the screen in order to be actually, actually see what's going on. Yeah. And that just seemed a little 
odd to me. Yeah. Like, I, I really wish they had just recorded it and live streamed it or put it up on their YouTube. And they, they were saying that they were going to post all of the talks. But, but I haven't, haven't seen, we anything, haven't seen yet. anything yet. And, and you know, I, I wish they would have done it both ways. Mm -hmm. Just do it for YouTube. Just give me what I want. I'm coming here for. And, and then allow people to go use alt space VR for, you know, for people who have the headset who actually want to go in and, and mingle. And with, I feel with... like a lot of people were talking about how good of an experience it was for the mingling aspect. Yeah. But then there was also so much frustration with trying to get into the talks where like the rooms were full. Things were hard to figure out. Yeah. You were talking about how you can hear other people talking. Because they forget to turn off Because they their, forget their, to turn off their, their sound. Their sound. It's, so, like a, it's like a Zoom call, you yeah, know? Where, and, and a new company or a new Zoom meeting you join mm -hmm. and everyone forgot to turn off. Their, Nobody knows how to mute themselves. Yeah, and then everyone's like just talking and the, the presenter's like, I'm presenting here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone's. Yeah, so it was a little down. frustrating. I, I feel yeah. like it was kind of just the most inaccessible way to hold a conference mm -hmm. when they could have just made it so much easier yeah. for everybody to watch and get the content, get the information. Yeah. But then like have alt space for the mingling, the after party, the socialization where you can go talk to the other people who are there, network, whatever. Yeah. But like you don't want to do that during a, a session. Yeah. You exactly. shouldn't be doing that IRL during a session anyways. Exactly. So it's, I mean, heck, even for real conferences, I would be happy with not having to go sit in a conference room I, maybe it's just because we're anti-social <laughs> it could also. be that maybe you're anti-social well you're an introvert i am an introvert i'm an extrovert but with the with the he's an anti-social extrovert <laughs> yeah pretty much what do you call i think there's a term for that you're an ambivert did you call me? what did you call me did you call me i said what i said did you call me a and like, is that like ambivore or something where you eat everything? What is uh omnivore? Omnivore. Yes. <laughs> sure. Do I? Are you saying I eat everybody? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I think it would. It could have been better. But um. Uh, anyways, there's a lot of interesting content. If you um. I'm really hoping they'll post it. There's a lot at of some interesting point. content that um. If, if you're watching this on so on YouTube, uh, you can see that what we're. Or we're looking at there's a lot of interesting content about the hololens so many talks um, about the like, cloud streaming the babylon js web AR, unity web unreal XR, yeah. everything yeah that's, so i had really wanted to, to see all these talks yeah, yeah. we, we anybody wanted anybody knows this, anybody get who, them to post the talks no but you know what and the other yeah. thing about that was that some of these talk were pre-recorded material i think a lot of them were a lot people, of people were okay. saying like what's why are we having to jump through these hoops when they're pre-recorded talks pre-recorded so it's just like a room when you go all everyone a bunch of little character goes in there and then like they just play a pre-recorded thing in the front of but, the room and, and it's just like what? but then also the rooms had occupancy limits i i didn't run into that problem I, but, but there was maybe there were other just, people yeah. i was seeing on twitter where they were saying i can't even get into the talks yeah because it says the room is full yeah yeah which seems like a like i understand it from trying to you know get that many people in a room in vr mm -hmm. but for an online thing it seems like such a silly thing to have an occupancy limit it is it is because like, uh, yeah, this is should, this is should be over the internet it, you should be able to to do everything support as many yeah. people as as yeah. want to watch it yeah and if you stay tuned on this uh podcast at the end we're going to talk about something that that we um it's like another alternative to alt uh alt space vr mm -hmm. that i i really like and it's it doesn't have that much barriers and stuff like that but we'll talk about that yeah later yeah. on so we were hoping to be able to report about what went on at yeah. dev days at uh mr dev days but unfortunately since we couldn't watch anything yeah we uh we couldn't really but we did check out the keynote uh which is on their uh youtube microsoft hololens yeah. youtube so if you want to check out the keynote um, that's there, and I think the fireside chat also is there. Although I didn't, I didn't watch that. Um, but that was at the beginning of the second day. Yeah, um, I think I, I I got a chance. To, well, everyone got a chance to watch the the keynote on mm -hmm. YouTube. Yes, because that was YouTube is live streamed on YouTube. So, and it got. I was so psyched. I was like, "This is exciting! I was like, We're gonna watch we're gonna so gonna much cool this. stuff today." And wait, then, where are the other talks? <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait, oh. wait, it's not here. Where? Oh, we <laughs> have to go into alt space. Yeah. 
Well, screw that. Never mind. <laughs> I have yeah. work that I need to do on my Mac. I can't yeah. use a Windows machine right now. Exactly. So, unfortunately. Yep. The next thing we wanted to talk about was a little bit about WebXR and Firefox Reality. So first things first, what is Firefox Reality? Firefox Reality is, is a new browser for VR experiences or or website so would this be that, the browser that you get when you're in vr yes or is this a yes. browser that you can use yes. on your computer that shows you vr stuff? this is going to be a browser it's like an app for your vr device so, okay i think it's on oculus uh, quest store too where you can just download the, the browser and then you can open it up in in vr and then VR. when you visit a website mm -hmm. um for example when you visit a website that is vr enable you can i think you can click on somewhere on there to kind of be immersed into to be to to enter that experience so to speak um and and it's it's a new browser that supports web vr web xr, XR technology so and web xr is essentially just a a spec a guidelines for it's an open um guideline it's a set standard, of guidelines standards standard, yeah. uh for xr stuff mm -hmm. um so that's in there. That's AR, VR, um, and and excess reality, all the R's, right? E. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so, and and so that's that's what it is. Okay. So how would a website become XR enabled or VR enabled? So they use uh, so right now all of the, the throwing him under the fire. Here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All the. <laughs> I'm I'm feeling a little bit interrogated here, Allison. <laughs> These are ready important for questions. This. I'm not ready for this. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, so this the, isn't an interview. Did so you it, not know? I know. I'm, am I being interviewed for a job now? It feels like no it. Comments. I'm like sweating over here. It's like, oh my God, I was not prepared for this. Don't you hate those interviews where you're like, I'm just here for a chat. Oh, yeah. you want me to do a technical interview? Yeah. What? Oh my God, you want me to, you want me to whiteboard this thing in the Excuse background me? too? Okay, let, hold on. Let me whiteboard this real quick in the back. But I think it would have for, been really funny if you just like pulled up a whiteboard. Thing. Hold on, let me whiteboard on <laughs> to, on on your your browser right cool. now. Cool. Um, so, but but in order to en enable this, there there's a few ways to make a website right now. There's you can use different library. Uh, web Web XR and Web VR is the 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 underlying technology is Web GL. Mm -hmm. It's like Open GL. Mm -hmm. It's three D graphic being able to render on your browser. So. Random question, and yes. I don't know if you know the answer to this off, off the top of your head. What does the GL stand for? Graphic something? Graphic library, I think. Oh, that makes sense. Um, I was I was wondering what G stands for, but if you know what G stands for, I'm let assuming us know. It's but graphics, I, I'm pretty sure it's something graphic mm -hmm. library. Um, so open is like open source is open is you know a lot of anyone can to, can kind of uh, anyone can can use it, contribute to it, contribute to it, yeah. Um, so, and so nowadays I feel like there's a, a different, there's, a, there's a couple, maybe two or three different libraries that you can use mm -hmm. to build web XR VR experiences on the web. First of all, first of all, everyone, it's been there. It's been there for a long time. It's called three JS. Yes. I've uh, heard of it. I think everyone heard of that. Mm -hmm. And another one that is by Microsoft, um, it's called Babylon J dot JS. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit less known, but it's more well it's more um, powerful. It's more powerful in some way. Mm -hmm. It's a that you. Could, it's more like a framework. It's more opinionated. I see. Um, and three JS. So, so is would this a little be bit like, like a library. React versus jQuery or yeah, something? Yeah, it's like library versus framework. Put this in JavaScript discussion. world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So interesting. And that's how you would build these these uh, experiences. So uh, I and, haven't really looked into this. Yeah. But I'm I'm curious about what does a VR enabled website look like what can it do it it will pro it, what can i do you can um for, from my experience i'm just waiting for him I, to I be like anything <laughs> i want anything like in, in the <laughs> that's not helpful you can render think of it as you can render any kind of fps experiences on your browser um and and the, i usually the sites comes with um so there's like all a little of our websites bun. are going to be first person shooters yeah pretty much pretty much and i think we can um 
we can show a little bit of it later on when we mm-hmm. talk about uh, Mozilla Hubs. I mm-hmm. think that's that's the thing that Mozilla is doing right now, and I I like what Mozilla is doing. They're doing they they're kind of spearheading a lot of VR, AR technology, bringing that to the web, and I really like that because the web is very ubiquitous right now. It's 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 everywhere. Like any any device will have most likely will have some sort of browser. So I feel like anyone can just build experiences and be able to give you a URL and you could just get there and open it and experience it. So this is pretty much like saying any website that enables this, that that uses, you know, these sorts of frameworks or libraries can be a game or an experience. Yeah, yeah exactly. Through VR. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because so, we've discussed doing things in uh, web, WebXR. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Lost myself you, a second You can say web VR or I like, XR. I think XR, XR is like web the, GL, the success. Web all the things. Web, uh, web XR is a successor to web VR. Gotcha. And then right now, I think they want to be more uh, kind of like an umbrella term for mm-hmm. it because VR just say virtual reality. But what about AR? What about Can you, you do know? AR? Yeah, through? yeah. I think right now, yes. I, I think that that's why oh, they call like it XR. Oh, that's like the size link thing that yeah. we used last week. Last podcast we talked about, and mm-hmm. I think that has to do with... A little so bit that was with... using WebXR. That was done through the browser, that but you done... could even use it through uh, on your phone instead of having to have a headset. You can say it like... I, don't, I, I haven't really looked into it that much, but mm-hmm. I don't know if it's truly WebXR mm-hmm. or it, it's just um, it's just opening something on your phone, like opening up uh, AR Core mm-hmm. or AR Kit on your phone. I, I think see. I think it's a ladder. I don't I think see. it's truly a WebXR. Gotcha. Web, I mean, sorry. I don't think it's a WebXR AR experience yet. I, I think AR is a little bit f- further off because but, it requires you to... So that would be to... saying that if you had... An AR headset. Yes. And you wanted to open a browser somehow. Yes. And then you could, you you know, access these sort of experiences, AR experiences. Yeah. Through your headset without having to download an app for every single one of them. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's the same idea with web VR or VR on the web too, is that you mm-hmm. can just load up real quick and just go at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think there are some experiences right now that I've seen out there uh, that allows you to experience augmented reality on your on on your phone as like a web page mm-hmm. where you go there, it needs access to your, 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 um, uh, camera. your camera mm-hmm. and then you can load it up and it's able to using javascript and stuff it's using to it is able to detect certain things and maybe superimpose uh, uh, an object the 3d object mesh on top of the real world that's essentially augmented reality right right so. right so we've actually talked about as kind of a dream thing yeah. <laughs> of doing some web xr stuff for a while we haven't actually done any of it but what are some of the thoughts and ideas Aside from the one thing that will be the idea for everything we talk about, of the claw game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hello. It's like my hello world. It's his world, hello world, you know? except he's never actually yeah, implemented ne- it. Never. He just every like my, type of experience. He was like, okay, just, can we do a mobile game? A claw can game. Can we do a claw machine? Uh huh. VR claw machine. AR uh-huh. claw machine. Uh huh. Yeah, exactly. Pixel Web art, XR. 2D uh-huh. pixel claw machine. <laughs> Uh, Everything's been the claw machine. Half the haptic <laughs> devices for the, the you know VR claw machine. Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> With your actual hand. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Although that would be a cool thing. I mean, not that it's a very good claw game, but to be able to do that with um, the hand tracking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. That's a good idea, Allison. Thank you. Yeah, Thank like you. you could just. I mean, that's kind of a silly claw game it. because you can very easily control. pick things up. But that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, maybe, like... maybe, maybe tweak it somehow. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Make it more difficult. But what other experiences or games do you think would be especially suited for WebXR versus actual downloadable VR content? Do you think there's anything that would work better in this kind of? environment i i think that um later on in the, <laughs> we want, the yeah we want to go through that the, well next topic we want to talk is mozilla hubs mm-hmm. and i feel like that is a uh i believe that is a very cool implementation of it, it is pretty much a virtual 
um, meeting room in v VR. And, and, and you can use it on your browser too. So anyone mm -hmm. can just like enter. You can create a room. It's like Zoom. It's like VR Zoom if you want to think about it that way. That's where cool. You can just create a room and you, with, you, you can be in a headset and mm -hmm. you can send the link like I can do it. I send you the link and you can join me. Uh, maybe we'll do this next week when we get out of VR device um, that would be fun. headset. And then I can create the room. I can get enter and you can enter it as with your browser on mm -hmm. your computer. And mm -hmm. then... And then you can interact. We can interact together. I can, I, we can talk through, um, uh, microphone or our mic setup. Then we can talk through that and you have your little avatar just walking around and I can, you know, we can interact with each other in 3d space. I actually do think that is a good point Yeah. that I don't know if you realize you made the point, but being, of course I do, Alice. <laughs> of course you do. Then what was the point? Uh, right. So <laughs> of being able to make xr spaces more accessible to people who don't necessarily have headsets yeah yes. i like that aspect where i can just access it from my browser yeah on my normal computer and then you if you have the headset you can you know look at it in vr but you're not cutting out all of the people who don't who can't afford it because headsets they're still yeah, really they're, still, pricey. they're still very not and uh, hard to get a hold of yeah so this is a great way to open up the world of VR to all of these people who it may otherwise be closed off to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I like that aspect of it. Exactly. That is a really cool thing that that I think you can probably do with with a WebXR. Yeah. Um, I I don't have the link open right now, but I was showing you the other day about this dinosaurs experience. Yeah. Where it's meant to be viewed in VR, but I was able to open it up, access it, play with it in my browser mm -hmm. and see, Hey, this is a cool little, a little cool little thing. Uh, we'll put the, the link in our show notes, yeah. but I like that aspect of web web XR. Yeah. And, and if you click on the, one of these links, you can see that somebody made, um, a, a customized space in Mozilla hubs it's like a museum. and it's, it's to make it look and feel like you're in the museum but but better right mm -hmm. interactive museum with maybe people in the background you can see the camera and what what not it's like zoom but maybe more for vr so i mean and people have been building museum experiences in on mozilla hubs that anyone can access to and quickly Imagine be able to get able in to there. go to the museums without having to deal with the crowds yeah exactly or getting in line if you're in like paris oh, yeah. and you go on one of those uh actually any that's museum why we in went paris. to paris and didn't go to a single museum yeah, there's the line too, too crowded too crowded but yeah and and i so so speaking of of virtual meeting space mm -hmm. i would you know it would have been i feel like much more accessible for Microsoft to do their dev days or anyone to do this on Mozilla hubs or something on the web where anyone can get to it. Is, is Altspace a Microsoft company? I don't think so. I don't, okay. think, I don't think it is. I mean, maybe they're looking to buy them because it seems like I they're doing know. a lot of stuff. And, but <laughs> although, you know, to be fair, Altspace VR has a lot more full, more feature is more powerful. Mm -hmm. some in some way it looks better it's a better it's a cooler experience yeah i'm not really complaining but, about alt space as a whole yeah. i just feel like it's, it was not the right choice yeah for the way they wanted to use it yeah it yeah. just made the conference very it was, inaccessible it was, just, it was just very difficult to, mm -hmm. to to get in there um and and, and be yeah able i mean to... it it feels like a bad thing if especially now when so many things have been made so easy on the web yeah if now they have to send you an email with a list of instructions on how to set it up and how to get in before the conference yeah yeah that's that's when you know there's like hey like, you know there is a barrier to maybe, entry here it's you know, not don't don't, don't <laughs> yeah. make the user think right i mean that's one of the, the you famous, shouldn't make these things this yeah. complicated yeah. especially when there are so many options that make it so much easier yeah 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 but yeah, I mean, speaking of making users think, I feel like the big part of the next wave of XR is user interface, right? Did you mm -hmm. have, did we want to talk about the, the React 360 today? 
Um, yeah. I think there right we go. there. I, I feel like we we both of us were both software developers. Yes. We work mainly on the web, so we yes. dealt we dealt with React, Vue.js, I mean, and all doing that. So much, so much React for so client projects, personal projects. Yeah, a huge amount of React and Vue. So it makes sense for Facebook being mm -hmm. um, the, the, the creators. The, of, the, the, yeah, the of company React. that backed React to be creating React 360. Because they're they're also the one that that you know create Oculus Quest, mm -hmm. um, and so they you know React three hundred and sixty that's gonna be they're trying to build the the, the React version for three D VR experiences. So I think that's that's kind of cool because the, so, I feel like in the future it's gonna be a lot more stuff in VR and three right. D space, and UI is gonna be you know very important. Mm -hmm. So would would this be an alternative to like Babylon or is this something else entirely? I this is in something else entirely, I believe. Okay, uh, so what would you use React 360 for? For for like say if you want to make an app. Yeah. Um like a, a dashboard. Just think of the dashboard of the future. Okay. And you have a bunch of buns and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. you can you can build it out. This is my I, I have not looked so into it. So this is like the component library. Yeah, of... it's almost kind of like that where okay. you have components and stuff, and it's it's to make it easier for you to build. Gotcha. You know, web page in three D, I suppose. Uh, and I, you can, you can, we can sort through it yeah. on, um, and see what's going on. But you know, like you have the canvas, you can set it up, you can put the button here, put the button there. And when you I click the button, it, it's able to, it's like react. Uh -huh. I think Babylon JS is almost, you can, you can think of it. Babylon JS is like unity where you can build any I kind see. of experiences. Okay. You can build a game. You can so build. So it's a little more on the game dev side yeah, of things yeah. versus this being on the web page. Yeah. Not saying UI that you can't build things. games with react because some people have tried building game with react. You can do so, anything if you try hard enough. Yeah, exactly. They're all just code. <laughs> just, just code anyway. Anything's right? possible. Yep. Maybe really difficult, but it's possible. Yes, yes. So, yeah, so the, I think that this is going to be really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, you know, when when we get to that So mass... many technologies to play with. Yeah, so, know, so little many, time. So many things to, to learn about. I want about. to do it all and yeah. I have no time. Yep. <laughs> and I think this is going to be, there's going to be a lot of opportunities in the space of making UI uh, and, and or building UI experiences for mm -hmm. VR. Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine that's going to be something that's important in the future. But before we go on, I want to go back to Firefox reality because yeah. we were talking about WebXR. Uh, what, is ex what is exciting to me or, or what makes me excited is that they, they're starting to support um, gaze support. Are uh, they adding yeah, gaze support to... To um to Firefox reality, so it, it just means that you can um, it, it means you can control. It's like controlling your cursor by with your gaze instead of having to use your like a, a mouse or a, a mouse or like a you know like your your controller mm -hmm. to to control where you're clicking. You can just gaze in that direction. I'm, I don't exactly know how hard they're doing this. Yeah, just just stare really hard. I don't know how they're doing this, but hopefully yeah i'm not entirely sure how it works but it's kind of cool yeah hopefully because is web xr mm -hmm. is a standard mm -hmm. uh that opens it up to oculus quest implementing the the standard and or other devices implementing the yeah and they were saying that that it'll be good for um headsets that don't necessarily have controllers oh yeah that's included true as that's part true. of them yep so it yeah. it makes a lot more things possible yeah yeah, the, the, so that's, it's, it's, uh, that's pretty cool. It's going to be exciting. Uh, yeah. the, the, the future is um, it's, it's very exciting. And speaking of, because uh, we, we mentioned 3JS, mm -hmm. Babylon JS. I think uh, Mozilla A-Frame is another one that that's, you can use to oh, build AR. I mean, not AR, VR experiences on the web. And also, you, I think the, um, they release, Mo Mozilla released something called the Unity Web XR Exporter. That you can use in unity so you can use unity to build and export it into a web xr experience exciting well i haven't tried this myself i should though I you should, should. And maybe you absolutely should we're gonna do this when we get out oh, there's so much i want to do when we I get know. the headset now now that we have some more free time we can <laughs> kind of explore and all sort that. of we have a podcast to do yeah we have that's true. youtube videos we have blog posts <laughs> we have so much, so much stuff yep 
free time. Bah. What is that? I think that's a myth. Free time. I don't myth. think it exists. <laughs> you can't convince me. The last thing we want to discuss today are these temperature illusions that were created by some researchers at the University of Chicago. And so what they did, Allison, was that they uh, they use these. Um, if you if you're watching us right now, they use like this little device. It's control. I, I believe it's controlled by Bluetooth. Yeah, it's Under Bluetooth. Your nose. It's controlled by Bluetooth, and it's synced up with your headset. So when you're in an experience, um, when you're watching VR and you're in an experience where it's hot, it triggers to uh, the the little device in front of your headset to release um, certain chemical. Uh, to to emulate uh, hot and cold weather, and for hot weather, they it's it's releasing the something called a caps capsaicin. Mm -hmm. um, to, it's uh, to 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 emulate being hot, and capsaicin is something that is a component of chili pepper. So, like when you eat chili pepper, like that's you know, it's what you, makes you feel like you're burning, yeah. even though your body's not actually warm. Exactly, exactly. And when you're in a cold weather mm -hmm. or environment or situation, it releases something called the eucalypt eucalypto. Mm -hmm. So it's it's something. It's a component. It's a main ingredient for mouthwash or a cough um, suppression. Cough so, drops? Yeah, cough drop, for example. Uh -huh. um, and so that's that's how it emulates hot and cold weather. It's really interesting. This really makes me think of like icy hot, tiger balm, yeah. those sorts of things yeah. that I think use the same ingredients yep. and they make you feel like your muscles are hot yeah. or cold when you rub it on your muscles. And uh, even though your body temperature is not actually changing. So you feel like if, if you've used yeah. those sort of muscle rubs, you kind of know how this feels. Yeah. And we, we definitely have a lot of that at mm -hmm. home. So next week when we get the headset, Austin, <laughs> oh, I can, uh, you know, okay, I, can, I can do ours, this for you. I can do this for you. Is that it's not odorless. Oh, it's not. Okay. That's true. Oh, that's true, right? Because it needs to be odorless because I don't want to be in a cold environment and, and I'm just getting like icy hot coming through my nose. Oh, clear your sinuses right up. <laughs> but, but but regardless, also I do really love that we this can is do, odorless. We though. can do this next week where you oh, go be in the device and you tell me when you're How in an environment about where it's cold. I'll do it to you. <laughs> and I'll stick my I'll have two fingers. I'll, I'll my one finger <laughs> with, with like with icy hot uh -huh. and one finger I I will I I figure out how to get chili pepper. Hey, it. we've got some chili crisp <laughs> in the fridge. Yeah, you can stick your finger yeah. in that chili oil. Yeah, and, then, and you will regret it for the next five days. Yeah, but then, it's okay. <laughs> it's in the name of it's science. Okay. It's, exactly. We're gonna <laughs> test this out where you will tell me when it's oh, cold gosh, or when it's hot, and I'll stick my finger in uh, you know the appropriate finger up your nose. <laughs> I don't think so it needs to go that. up my nose. Well, you gotta get the just the, like full... in front of my nose. <laughs> front of, okay, I'll I'll stick it there. Um, and then you, we you, you can tell me, it's like, oh my God, I feel warm. <laughs> <sighs> oh my so God. Cozy. I'm so immersed in I'm this. I'm burning. <laughs> Do you, don't you think that's a good idea? I mean, we got to test this theory out, Allison, I somehow, some way. So we, we obviously do not have the, the, um, the ability to make this hardware right now. I feel like we'll wait for the system uh, that well, these researchers came sure? up with because it just seems a little <laughs> bit better. Are, are you sure, though? Look, I think, I think that's fine. We can attach to your VR headset. I know. It's really cool. It looks kind of funky, though, but I'm sure with techn as technology I've, goes, it's going to be better. What and, doesn't look funky yeah, that's, about that's VR very headsets? True. That's, that is true. All of it looks funky. We all funky. look like a bunch bunch of like i don't know just... we all look like a bunch of dorks yeah exactly an, an extra little this thing is... at the front and going under the bottom it's, it's, it's it really totally. just makes you look more cool yeah exactly it but, makes you look like a but Austin, did you know that capsaicin uh capsaicin yes. is uh is a chemistry makeup of it is eighth mytho and vanilla vanilla and six and no name He's trying so hard to sound <laughs> smart. <laughs> so hard. Please let us know. Yes. Let me know that. <laughs> Who in the audience that, that? knew that? Yeah. I'm sure you didn't. So this podcast is nothing but educational. We are the and most inform inform educational. <laughs> okay, but I do love the idea because this kind of relates to like haptics. Yeah. And the idea of being able to feel things in vr yes and i think that's just such a cool system yeah yeah it would it would be so immersive i feel like if we 
if we were born right now, if if I can just freeze myself for the next hundred years and just like reawake myself in a hundred years, well, if first I of all, turn forward time. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. First of all, uh, but no, no, no. But seriously, though, it, it, I feel like in, in 50 years, I mean, even 20 years, 10 years, 10 years, even technology is going by so fast right now. I, I would all these things going to be it's, we're going to be like the Matrix. We're going to be in this experience. Uh, that's just going to be so hypothetical real. eventual grandchildren are just going to be like, yeah, grandma, grandpa. I remember? Yeah. Y'all are so old fashioned. You're so old school with this. XR like we, stuff. We want to use our it's, it's not PCs gonna... and type on our keyboards, and they're just like, who does that anymore? Yeah, they're going to be like, what XR? It is just reality then, you know? It's going to be JR. Why would you want reality without JR, really? Yeah, just, just reality. Just reality. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to oh, copyright God. that. <laughs> copyright. Just it's just reality. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. I want you all to start using that yeah. term. I, I hope I'm going to write a letter to Mozilla JR. and get Mozilla to support uh, JR too with their XR initiative. <laughs> it's just reality. Just reality. <laughs> But yeah, what what kind of things can we build with this? I mean, think about like let's just think that this is available for us right mm -hmm. now. What will we build? Imagine, you know, to be able to, okay, not oh, this like, specifically, oh, but I'm with, imagining cooking. No, I'm like no, forget cooking, Sorry. Allison. With every new devices and apps platform, what's the what's the apps that people build? Fart apps. There's gonna be a fart app. Exactly. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> right? Best I mean, new <laughs> use. But just like a slight warm breeze. Yeah, it's a warm breeze. Just oh we need some we need like just I don't know, chemical slight stuff to, to warm. Yeah. And a little bit of stink. <laughs> Lots of stink. Depends. More than a little Depends. bit of stink. You can you you have like a little in the option menu you have uh -huh. a little gauge, you have little options to turn up how, how far do, how, do you want this fight to be? <laughs> how stinky this is. You know, I don't know. Let us know. You know what? You, what would you build with all these new uh, uh, little fart contraption? App. Fart, fart, app. App. fart app. That's gonna be in our YouTube comments. Just all of the fart comments app. Fart, uh, fart are gonna app. be fart app. You know, I speaking of of farts. Oh, no, speaking of of these speaking these, of farts. these uh, little additional haptic contraption uh -huh. on your VR. I think there's there's. If I'm if I remember correctly, I've seen something on Twitter lately that somebody is working on uh, taste too. Taste. Really? Yeah, you can. I haven't which, seen that. It's so weird though. I, I don't know how you're gonna. Uh, Do they buy use a, combination a smell of, aspect? I don't. I don't think so. It's like hmm. I, I just saw something on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's fake news. <laughs> Who knows? But but somebody's just like some little device where you could just put your tongue, like stick on your tongue, uh. and it's generate. <laughs> different chemical or, or electrodes or whatever to simulate that seems that's so, so uncomfortable. i know that is so weird just like <laughs> right <there. laughs> I'm, the, uh, I'm just you're I'm just gonna be drooling the... everywhere <laughs> just, uh, plus me this is a, great. and then you get electrocuted <laughs> 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 that just seems like the worst thing ever. It is. It is. But yeah, what I mean, it would be cool if it worked. But like, yeah, that's... I am not signing up to be the guinea pig for that one. But you know, nope. then, then that would solve the problem of everyone who watches our uh, our our Twitch uh, stream, our cooking <laughs> uh -huh. stream on Twitch. Our at, cooking at stream. Twitch TV slash always sushi day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then now imagine people ten years from now, people, everyone, and watching our stream. Don't will you be, worry. We can zap your tongue. Yeah, we can zap your tongue. And, you know, oh, we're cooking some delicious marble tofu. You can taste it right now. Just stick this thing in your mouth. <laughs> Immediate tasting. Zapping your tongue. <laughs> Spicy foods. Durian. Same I'll just thing. feed I'll just feed our audience durian. Like, feed our viewers. Like, oh, just, you know, just put this in your mouth. Nobody who's you... <laughs> smart is going to use that for our stream. Because we would do that shit to them. I guarantee you, this is going to be the best durian. tasting pizza ever. And then they stick in there. and Durian. All they taste. You know, but durian, though, without the smell, That's durian true. is delicious. It right? is. Durian it is. is sweet. It's creamy. So, uh, without the smell, it might be tasty. But then, without the smell, would it be durian? That's the question. The real the philosophical real, question. The real question. Here on. To be durian. Access reality. <laughs> to not be durian. So yeah, what will you build if you have a smelly device? But is it any type of smells or just the hot cold? 
I guess that's true, right? Because hot and cold, even mm-hmm. hot and cold, it's it's it would be interesting though. It would be interesting because it'd be really cool for games where you're swimming or you're in a snow yeah. environment, you're in outer space, you're that's true. They're in a desert. There are yeah. so many environments where having that extra sense yeah. of temperature yeah. would definitely add something. I think it would be, For sure. be interesting. That would be interesting. But that being the only one, I don't know. One one aspect I can think that, or one uh, situation that I can think that would could really benefit, because I feel like a lot of these would be cool, but maybe a little gimmicky yeah. and maybe wouldn't add that much. Yeah. One place where I think it might add a ton is in horror games. Oh, yeah. Being that's able to true. just give you a chill. That's true. Or just make you feel just a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Make things that much scarier. Yeah. I, I mean, will never be the one testing those. I hate horror games. W- would it be horror game or maybe just like if you think about it, you're 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 uh you're walking on top of lava or something and it's really hot. And well, it gives you that, that sense. Of, would that I, be horror too? I no, mean, not really. That's more action. Action. And okay. I don't know that it would really add that much. You don't, you don't think so? Just walking on lava? And... Because I don't know that you would... Well, I don't know how much this will raise or lower your sensation of temperature. Right. That's but true. But I can't imagine it getting hot enough to feel really, really uncomfortable. Like, I need to get out of the situation immediately. Yeah. I also don't know... If you can control how long you're feeling, that's because like if it if it sprays on you, maybe, is it gonna like? Can you control when long, it goes away? Maybe it's just as long as you can, uh, as you're as you are in that situation. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it like constantly has to be spraying at you, yeah, because, or if it's like icy hot where you rub it in, but then you feel it for a while. I see. Yeah. So that's I'm I'm not sure about that yeah well i mean if if we were doing what i said i'm gonna do just sticking my finger up your nose i can control the duration allison i but promise you can't because oh, even yeah, after true. your finger goes I away i'm there, still yeah, gonna that's, feel that's true the chili oil in one okay, nostril you know and the icy hot in the other okay I'll, I'll bring napkins i'll rub it off and then when you're just tell me when okay, you're you out. know that doesn't actually work <laughs> that's true that's we true. tried that that's true do you remember oh, when I cut all those? On you. <laughs> just pour milk on you. Sorry. Okay. Do you remember when I cut all those jalapenos and it was like a week yeah. where my hand was burning? Oh, well, I don't remember because I didn't have to experience week. it. But, <laughs> but that I'm was sure you Christmas. did remember. It was very unpleasant. <laughs> I now know. Always wear gloves. When always you're cutting wear gloves. Jalapenos. Exactly. Or you will regret it. <laughs> Forever. I regretted uh, for, it for a week. For a week. Well, you regret it forever, but you felt it for a week. Yes. But yeah, I I'm yeah, very is, interested in the direction that this yeah. research is going. I don't going. know with with all these little haptic devices because I remember when VR was first first came out and mm-hmm. it was a thing and people were building like um I, I remember going to uh some sort of a we went to some co- conference conference right? or some some uh, like a. a in LA, in Los VR Angeles, dev VR day? De- some sort of uh, something like a demo show or whatever, mm-hmm. VR day or something, yeah. where um, people were were setting up these. They they have like these USB fan where mm-hmm. they simulate that you're in a, a windy situation, right? And it's just kind of funny <clears> because <throat> what, now now if you think about it, in the future, we have all these haptic or, uh-huh. or feedback devices. Uh, we're gonna be just in a big old suit or something, or in a weird. You're gonna have a special room where you go mm-hmm. in there and experience VR to the full. Have your VR rooms. Yeah, and what about if you're swimming, Allison? Would you just the room would just fill up with water? What if you're drowned? Oh wait, <laughs> that's like I a matrix. You, that just, far. you die in in VR. No, you but die I think there, in real life. there are ways to. Uh, make you feel like you're your water you're, you're underwater. underwater oh mm-hmm. okay you know what we don't have any we're not good at with hardware we're just software people i'll spray i'll get a can of spray water spray i'll spray at you when you're in water just tell me i'll splash some water on you it's gonna be great he's gonna short circuit i will headset. immerse you Allison. i will give you the most immersive short experience <laughs> ever but yeah yeah i I want to see where haptics goes. Yeah. But I definitely feel like a lot of the things that we've seen, this one actually seems reasonable because you can just attach it to your headset. It's yeah. not this big extra thing. A lot of the haptics things that we've seen 
have been like, okay, but realistically, is it's a gonna, person at home gonna, gonna buy little, this and set yeah. this up and have the space for yeah. all of this equipment? Like a big old fan. Yeah. <laughs> it it seems like a good idea for yeah. like those VR um, arcades, yeah. kind of. Yep, that's because true. That makes sense where you actually do have a whole room where you can set up all this stuff and you have the money probably to do, you know, buy all of this extra stuff yeah. for the experiences. But yeah. for a home, you know, it's going to be yeah. user. I don't think most of it is, is yeah. going to work as well. I feel like most, like you said, it's going to be a little bit on the gimmicky side. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's cool. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. We'll see where it goes. It's everything is it's ex, it's an exciting uh, time right now. It is. And everything is going to I feel like it's going to change in the next 5 years. Uh, it's going to be really cool to it's see where it in, goes. It's going to be very interesting. And we're going to be in the front seat. Yes. We're going to go see see it all. Like I said, I'm going to have my fingers ready for you next week. I will I will immerse you in this reality as enough two fingers experience. <laughs> very the two with finger this. experience is what I call it. I am not comfortable <laughs> with this. I'm going to go around like this so you cannot get into my nostrils. <laughs> That's all for this episode. Thank you for listening. And thank you for all the feedback that we received last week for our first episode. It's go We're going to try to incorporate all that into our future episode to make it this podcast better. You can find our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. And for the visual version of this podcast, check us out on youtube.com slash sushi codes. Our show notes for every episode can be found on sushicodes.com. And if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or ideas of what we should get for our quest that's coming soon, let us know either on sushicodes.com or on our YouTube channel on youtube.com slash sushi codes. See you next week. Bye-bye.